what feels right for you, obviously. So we're going to start by um, standing on our mat. So feet are decent width apart. So get a nice stable base and just rock a little bit from side to side. Just kind of get a sense of connection with the floor beneath you, especially if you've been sitting all day. And you can roll the shoulders, all that. You know the kind of things that kind of ease into your body. Um, almost, it's that idea, isn't it, when you see animals kind of get up after having a snooze, they, they stretch. So it's the same kind of thing with us. It's nice to stretch, so I move. So rolling the shoulders back and then rolling the shoulders forward and just rocking from side to side. So let your body move because our bodies are meant to move. And then stop, stop, roll your head or turn your head, I should say. And as you turn your head from side to side, roll your shoulders back. If you can, I will find that quite difficult. And then nod the head, nod the head up and down and roll the shoulders forward. And if you're just joining, just take your time. Just rolling the shoulders forward, nodding the head, or up and down, and then stop. And then we're just gonna take the right arm up and you're gonna stretch up, turn to look up towards the fingers and really stretch up. Now take your attention to the left heel, draw the left heel up, and from the left heel all the way up through the body, diagonally through the spine, right up to the right fingertips, you stretch. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, just bring the arm down, bring the heels back on the floor. Readjust your balance through the feet. We're going to take the left arm up. Turn the gaze, look towards the left fingertips. Take your attention to your right heel. Draw the right heel up. Almost as though from the right heel, there's that feeling coming up through the hip, diagonally through the spine, right up through to the fingertips. Stretch up, so you could touch the ceiling. Stretch up, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, let go. Readjust the weight or rebalance the weight through the feet. You're going to sink down into the right foot. And notice what happens when the right foot sinks. When you, the weight goes down into the right foot, your right hip pops out as bit of it. Left shoulder sinks. Turn the gaze to the left. Left fingertips trail towards the outside edge of the left ankle. So we're compressing the left, we're opening the right. If it's okay with your arm, take the right arm up. But don't stretch this time. The weight of the arm rests into the shoulder all the way down through to that right foot. Breathe in, and then as you breathe out, lower your arm, come back to stand. So really good ways of opening up different parts of your lung spaces. Then we're gonna sink down into the left foot, down, rest your weight down into the left foot, left hip moves out slightly, right shoulder sinks. So turn your head to look past the right shoulder or down towards the outside edge of the right ankle. As the right fingertips trail down, pass the right knee if possible towards the outside edge of the right ankle. Take the left arm up, but you're not stretching. The weight of the arm sinks into the shoulder, breathe in. Feel the lung spaces in the left side of the body, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, lower your arm and come back to stand. And then again, circle your shoulders. So all these little things, they're just about freeing up a bit of tension around the neck and the shoulders. Circle the shoulders in the opposite direction. Take the feet a little bit wider and we're just going to soften your knees so we kind of protect the knees and you just swing the arms a little bit from side to side. Just be careful, you know, if you haven't got a lot of space around you, just make, make sure you don't, don't demolish your house. So you're just swinging the arms, soften your knees. You're using this to rotate the upper part of your spine and know that your gaze follows or your head or your, your neck turns in relation to where your arms are. Feel that twist through the upper part of your spine. Make sure you're breathing, and then when you're ready, stop, stop. You're gonna take the arms wide, relax your shoulders, then the right arm is gonna go behind the left shoulder, left arm or left hand behind the right shoulder. So the left elbow is on top. Soften your knees, drop your chin, and then round your spine. Draw the elbows in towards the base of the ribs, round, round spine. Make sure you're breathing. And then when you're ready, just come forward, take the elbows forward, take the elbows up. And your gaze goes up. Take the elbows forward, take the elbows down, and you round the spine. So you go into that forward bend, the gaze comes down, the chin draws in. Take the elbows forward, take the elbows up, your gaze goes up. So you go into a slight back bend or extension. And then just doing that a few times, just rounding the spine forward and down, taking the elbows forward and up. 
So really a good way of kind of easing into the back of the body, mobilising your spine, and obviously your knees are bent and you only do the movement as far or as little as feels all right for you. And then when you're ready, come back to where you started and just let go of the arms. Shake off a little bit. So then the left arm is going to go across the body, left hand on the right shoulder, right arm across the body. So now the left elbow is on top. Soften your knees and this time you're just going to rock or twist the elbows from side to side. So just as you did before, but you kind of move different muscles really in the shoulders and your gaze follows. And then stop, stop, take the elbows up, your gaze goes up. Take the elbows down, draw the elbows in towards the base, the ribs around the spine. And just do that a few times, just mobilising the spine as easily or as effortlessly as, as you can really. So you're not, you're not trying to, you don't have to go a bit further each time, you don't have to do very much at all. You're just trying to move, just trying to free up all those muscles that have been used and locked in the way all day long. And then when you really come back to centre and then stop. Then the right arm or right hand on the left shoulder, left hand on the right. So the right elbow is on top. This time, you're just going to sink that left shoulder towards the left hip. So it's only between two panes of glass. Turn the gaze, look down towards that left ankle. Turn the gaze, look up past that right shoulder. And then when you're ready, just ease back and then let go. Then the right elbow across the body. Left elbow, uh, left elbows underneath. I'm not sure if that's right. It doesn't matter too much. This time, the right shoulder sinks towards the right hip. Turn the gaze, look towards that right ankle. Turn the gaze, look up past the left shoulder. So it's mobilising the neck as well as kind of stretching and mobilising your shoulders a little bit. Up and down a few times. And then when you're ready, come back to centre and then just let go. Circle your shoulders. And hopefully they feel, you know, they're going to feel a bit different. So just going to do one more thing with the shoulders that kind of helps the, the, the rotation. So if we're going to bring the arms in front, so the palms of the hands are together. So soft, soft shoulders, soft elbows. Then you're going to turn the palms away so the back of the hands come together. Then the right hand is going to go over the top. So you're bringing the palms together, right hand on top. Just link the fingers, loosely link the fingers. Wide elbows, soften your shoulders, soften your jaw. Then you're just going to bring the hands under and in towards your chest and up. And then you're going to reverse. And then you're just going to let go and just shake off. I know most of us are suffering like tight wrists and shoulders at the moment. Um, right, so then we bring the palms together. Turn the palms away so the back of the hands come together. Then the left um, palm goes up and over. Just lo loosely link the fingers because you can always unlink. Then wide, wide elbows, wide shoulders, we're going to bring the hands down, draw them in towards you and take them up. So just a good way of kind of mobilising the shoulders. And then reverse, reverse, and then let go, let go, shake, shake off. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to come, we'll just turn some of the back of more of the bottom of the mat. And you're just going to send the right foot forward. So you've got a bit of space between the feet, lift the back heel up and down a few times and then as the back heel rests down send the front knee or bend the front knee so that no, neither knee is locked we're just going to do that little movement again with the arms so you're going to take the arms forward just as you did before palms together being you're not stretching at no given time are you stretching then turn the palms away the right palm is going to go over and the right palms just going to come together loosely link the fingers take the hands down and thread through. Now if it's okay for you, take the elbows up and down a few times. So just feel what's going on in your shoulders and then when you're ready, just reverse what you've done, reverse what you've done, and then lower. And then step the right foot back, send the left foot back. Oh sorry, sorry, send the left foot forward. Soften the front knee, bring the back heel up and down a few times. So just find your stable, stable base. Then as the back heel goes down, don't lock the back knee, don't lock the front knee. Take the arms forward, uh, sorry, palms together, arms forward. Relax the shoulders, soften the elbows. Then you're going to turn the palms outwards so the, the backs of the hands come together. Left palm or left hand goes over, so the palms link together. 
the left elbow or left wrist is on top, soft elbows, wide elbows. Take the hands underneath, in towards you and up. And this time you're just gonna twist the other part of the spine from side to side. But keep that sense of the knees moving forward. So we're just trying to mobilize the upper part of the spine, the shoulders and the neck, free up the jaw. Come back to center, um, reverse what you've done with the hand so you unknot, unknot, and then step back. Take the right foot forward, right foot forward. Then the right hand's gonna go across the body, right hand just rests on the left shoulder, left hand across the body, left hand just rests on the right shoulder. And then from here, knees are moving forward. So what I mean by that is you're not twisting your knees from side to side. You keep the base of the toes and the heels just as they are, and you just twist again the upper part of the spine. Just kind of see how that feels for you. And then come to centre, and then we're going to draw the elbows in, draw the chin in, round the spine forward. We're going to take the elbows forward, we're going to take the elbows up, take the gaze up. Just do this a few times, so we're just trying to find a bit of mobility in the upper part of the spine. So you're just rounding the spine and lifting the spine, those kind of things. And your gaze follows the elbows. And then the next time, the next time, your elbows come down, or, the, or think of the elbows coming in towards the base of the ribs. So the spine might feel quite rounded. Your gaze is down towards the floor. We're going to take unfold the arms. We're going to take the right arm down. Now it will just go to where it goes. You don't have to reach the floor. It might just come to your knee. Well, wherever it goes is fine because we've all got different length arms. The right arm goes down, and then we're just going to circle the left elbow. Find the left shoulder. So left hand can go on the left shoulder. And then as the left elbow goes up, your gaze goes up. Use that to find a bit of a turn in the spine and maybe take your arm up. Now, if it's no good with your arm up, just keep your arm down, it's fine. Feel your breath in your body. And then when you're ready, lower that top arm if it was lifted, come back to centre and step back. Just stop for a few moments, feel how that's kind of working in your body. Then the left foot goes forward. The knees are quite soft or bent, whatever the word means for you. The left knee moves forward, lift the back heel up and down a few times. As the back heel goes down, send the left knee forward a little bit more. The left hand across the body, left hand rests on the right shoulder, right hand across the body, rests on the left shoulder. And then again, we just do the same as we did before. So just move or twist the other part of the spine from side to side. So your knees, are kind of moving forward, try not to twist through the knees. Your hips can move a little bit, but you're having that sense of connection down through the feet as you're moving the spine from upper, the upper spine from side to side. Come to centre, bring the elbows down, round the spine, make sure you're breathing. Take the elbows forward, take the elbows up. And you can slow it down, find a bit of a rhythm or a pace. And then when you're ready, the next time your elbows come down and draw in, your gaze is down towards that front foot or towards the floor, we unfold the arms. The left arm goes down, right hand can rest on the right shoulder at first, circle the right elbow, move the shoulder, move the shoulder, maybe turn the gaze towards the right. As the right elbow goes up, feel that turn through the centre of the spine, and perhaps there's a possibility of taking that right arm up. And you feel the breath in your body. And that twist that you've achieved, hopefully, quite effortlessly. And then when you're ready, you can lower that top arm, come back to centre, and step back. Quite well done. Let's just do that last one one more time. So we're just going to it in a different way. Going to things in different ways all the time will, will uh, make you use different muscles. So the right foot moves forward. And the benefit to using different muscles is that we're not overworking any one particular part of our body. And that's how we stay strong right, and supple. So we send the right knee forward. Don't worry about going too long with the legs. You can go wider if you like. If your balance is a bit bit off, you can go a little bit wider. So you send the right knee forward and let yourself settle. So send the right knee forward a little bit more. If you place your left hand on the back of the waist, as you send the right knee forward, imagine from the, the hand that's resting on the back of the waist, inside underneath there, your spine is coming up. 
And then when you start to take your spine forward, just parallel to the floor, where the hand resting behind you, just imagine you can come up into that hand. The right hand can rest on the right knee or maybe a little bit lower. Where the hand resting behind you, turn back towards to allow the upper part of the spine to twist away from that right knee. So your gaze might go up towards the ceiling or you can keep the gaze down. Think of the left shoulder being drawn up and being drawn back. And if you lift the left arm, it's with the idea that the weight of that left arm rests into the left shoulder and the twist comes from the central part of the spine. The right knee is still moving forward, the back heel rests and you feel your breath. And then when you're ready, lower that top arm, come back to centre, slowly, carefully, step back. And then just stop for a few moments and notice how you feel. Because it's in the stopping, in the slowing down, where our body finds that rest. And then that idea that the movements land. And then when you're ready, step the left foot forward. So we send the left knee forward, but we're not locking the back knee. So as the, you can lift the back heel up and down a few times. Make sure you've got that movement. As the back heel rests, that grounds or connects you to the floor, stabilises the movement. The right, sorry, left knee can move forward. We can go into things in a different way again if we like. We can place the hands on the centre of the spine and it's inside here, the centre of the spine, that we turn from. So first of all, imagine that with this part here is coming up away from that front knee. So the opposite movement would be, is if you sink, you can, you know, you can allow the base of the ribs to sink down towards the hips and then rest down through the feet as you're inside underneath the ribs, relift, the shoulders settle, find length in your neck. And then keep, can we keep that sense of coming up as now we start to send the torso forward or the chest forward. Try to make as much space in the front of the hips as possible. Send that front knee forward. The left hand just rests somewhere. It might just go on that left knee, it's fine. It doesn't have, if it goes to the floor, it's fine. It might go to the floor or, or it might just go onto the side. But you just see where you are because we're trying to turn the spine, not reach the floor. Now the, the right hand can rest on the waist behind you, if you like, or on the hip. And then from inside, underneath the ribs, we turn away from that left knee. So the upper part of the spine is turning away from, and then perhaps the right arm will lift. Your gaze can stay down, or your gaze can go up. The, the arm that's above you is not being stretched, the arm that's above you rests down. And you might want to take it over past your head, just kind of see where you are. And then when you're ready, we bring the arm back, we come to centre, we come to stand, and we step back. Well done. So, you know, there's always different variations, working things in different ways. Right, so take the feet a little bit wider, soften, soften the knees, and we're just going to bring our hands onto the thighs. We're going to draw the chin in, we're going to round the spine. We're going to take the hands onto the knees, we're going to send the knees a little bit further forward, lift up one heel at a time. Find the base of your toes. And then let your heels lightly, lightly rest as you think of, think about sending the weight more forward into the toes, the front part of the foot, because we're gonna go into a forward bend. So the front part of our foot has to activate. We will activate anyway, but just being aware of it. Soft, soft knees, maybe the hands come a little bit lower towards the ankles. Let go of the head, let go of the neck. If you let go of your neck, you're gonna find more freedom in the lower back. You might find that your legs are straightened, but it doesn't matter, they can still be bent. Imagine you're going to lift the heels, so you get a sense of coming up through the backs of the knees. Perhaps your fingertips lightly, lightly find the floor. Let go of the jaw, let go of the neck. And then from here, if possible, be careful, just see if you can take your hands forward. So we're going to come down on the floor, so you come down into the floor that's possible for you. When the heels lift, the knees come down. Flatten the feet and carefully ease your hips back a little bit towards the heels. Spring the, heel, the hips up, send the top of the head forward a little bit. And just go forward and back a few times. So easing the crown of the head forward, easing the hips back. So just right, really, we're just kind of testing to see what our knees are like, what our thighs are like. And perhaps there's a possibility that you can send the hips all the way back towards the heels. You don't have to hold it. You lift, you send the crown of the head forward. 
But how there's a possibility of sending the hips all the way back? And just see how that feels in your knees. And if it does feel okay in your knees, in your thighs, ease your hips back, settle. Make light fists with the hand just to support the head. Feel the weight of your head. If it's possible to take um, one hand away or, or you can bring the forehead on the floor, just kind of see what's possible for you. I'll just change the camera angle. So you come into a child's pose, but only, you know, resting with it for as long as it feels okay for you, because it's seen as a resting position, but you know, it's not that resting for some of us. So just kind of ease into it. Let go of the weight of your head, let go of the weight of the shoulders. Feel your breath. And then when you're ready, just coming up and just coming onto your back. So the soles of your feet flat to the floor and your knees are bent. So just allowing yourself or your body, the weight of your body to be given. And you know, our bodies are heavy. So bring your arms down by your side. And just for a few moments, feel your shoulders. Push your shoulders down into the floor and then let go. Push your feet down into the floor and then let go. Just do that a few times. Push the shoulders. Let go, push the feet, let go. Shoulders down, let go. Feet down, let go. Focus on your breath and when you're ready, as you breathe in, take your arms up and all the way on the floor above your head. And as you breathe out, bring your arms up and all the way back down to your side. In breath, take your arms up, feel the weight of the arms into the shoulders and if possible, take the arms on the floor above your head. But if that's not possible, just go to where you can. You're not stretching and as you breathe out, bring your arms back down. Just mobilising a little bit into the shoulders and finding your breath. Now if it's possible for you, the next time your arms go overhead, just stay there and breathe as you need to. Now you're not stretching. The elbows are quite wide and there's space, you know, like, like a circle above your head. The elbows might come down or they might not come down. If it's really uncomfortable, take the arms a little bit wider or bring them down to your side. So always find a way of, of working in these, in these um, positions that feel accessible for you. Then take your attention down through to your feet and just lift up your heels and then lower your heels. Just do that a few times, lifting and lowering the heels. Then the next time your heels come down, lift and lower the toes or the, base, or the front parts of the foot and then bring the toes down. Now, lightly, lightly push down into the toes, into the base of the toes, into the heels and allow your hips to come off the floor. So rest down into the feet to allow the hips to lift. Rest down into the shoulders to allow the spine to come a little bit higher. So you feel that length from the heels to the knees to the hips, through the spine, all the way through to the crown of the head. Make sure you're breathing, relax the buttock muscles, relax the muscles of the belly. Let go of the hips, you're not pushing the hips up, the legs, the feet, the shoulders, the back of the head support the spine, and ever so carefully lower. And we're just going to do that one more time. You can bring your arms down by your side if that feels a little bit better for you. Take the feet perhaps a little bit wider. You can find the outside edges of the feet, the inside edges of the feet, the outside edges of the hips, and where your hips are resting into the floor. The right shoulder, the left shoulder, the shoulders in between, the back of your head. Then ever so carefully rest down into the feet you might find that the knees get sent away slightly to allow your hips to lift. So you're not rolling up, you're not tilting up, you're not gripping, you're not forcing. Your hips start to lift, the belly is soft, buttock muscles are soft, the lower back muscles stay soft. You can, if you like, take your arms on the floor above your head, but you don't have to. Imagine the space between the thigh, the back of the thigh and the calf becoming wider, becoming more spacious. So imagine the thighs and the knees being drawn up to allow the spine to come up a little bit further away from the floor. 
feel the weight into your shoulders and just for a few moments be with your body just as it is and then ever so carefully lower your spine back down take your arms a little bit wider or let the hands come to rest on the ribs and just as your feet are just allow the knees to drop over towards the right so you just roll onto the edges of the feet to let the knees drop to the right come back to center Roll onto the inside edge of the right foot, the outside edge of the left foot to let the knees drop to the left. Soften your belly, feel your breath. Come back to centre and just rock from side to side, having that sense that you're rolling or you're rocking through the feet. And that connection with your feet on the floor translates through the ankles, through the thighs or the knees, the thighs to the hips and the spine. And your attention is on yourself. So when you attend to this moment, to what's happening now, you just give yourself a chance to allow your thoughts to rest. And real rest comes from inside. Comes from our thoughts being allowed to stop or to settle. And then just come back to centre when you're ready. Draw the knees in towards you. You can lightly place your hands on your knees and again just rock from side to side. Just having the sense of the back of the body being allowed to ease. And then just when you bring your feet on the floor, just notice is there a possibility of sending the legs away? You can keep the knees bent if you like. You can keep your hands on your body or you can take your hands down by, or your arms down by your side. Just find a position that feels comfortable for you, just to rest in for the last few moments. If you'd rather keep the knees bent, you keep the knees bent or you can straighten them away. If it's okay to close your eyes, close your eyes and just for a few moments, be aware of the weight of your body in connection with the floor beneath, the weight of your head and your shoulders. And as you breathe in, can you feel the breath in the back of the head and the back of the shoulders? And as you breathe out, can you let this area or these areas rest a little bit deeper? The head and the shoulders. Taking your attention a little bit lower to the waist and the hips, the chest, the lower back, the belly. And as you breathe in, can you feel the breath inside your body? From the in-breath, the lungs fill with air, the belly rises. You might feel the breath in the lower back. And as you breathe out, you let go. You let go of the breath and you let go of all these areas. And you just allow yourself to rest a little bit deeper into the floor below. As you move your attention down through your legs to your knees, your calves and your feet. And as you breathe in, feeling your breath in the lower half of your body. And as you breathe out, you rest and you let go a little bit more. And your breath comes in and your breath leaves and you settle. And you breathe. And then as we prepare to come out of the practice, just deepening your breath a little bit, so maybe making the in-breath just a little bit deeper. Letting the out-breath leave. Deepening the in-breath. The in-breath signals to our body that we're about to start to move just because it draws more oxygen into our body. You, you can stretch the arms, roll the head, open your eyes if it's okay. So doing whatever feels right for you because you can rest a little bit longer if you, if you have the time. Doing whatever feels right for you till eventually you come to rest on your side. So take your time. Settling there for a few moments. And then when you're ready, just coming to sit up. 